Okay, lots 19 and 20 crossbred gilts. Uh, we're going to focus on the lot 19. Uh, 40-7 guild. Another one sired by doing this, the burger boar that's uh, uh, next in line, son, that uh, we used uh, really hard and uh, are going to continue to use because he's added that uh, burliness, stoutness, center body, and dimension that uh, uh, we need on some of these sows here. So 40-7's uh, mother is an overruled dirty love, and it's actually a guilt that I bought uh, from our, my partnership there with uh, Austin and and uh, Mort uh, there, uh, the Threes Company, had a group of gilts there a couple years ago, and uh, I, I asked if they'd price them, and I bought a couple gilts, and they've sure, uh, we've got a pair of these Littermate 15-letter uh, gilts that have done an awesome job. Uh, their pedigree is overruled Dirty Lovin'. The Dirty Lovin' sows have done tremendous uh, uh, in Michigan for us, and uh, wanted to tap into that here down here in Roanoke. So, um, actually, uh, the their Dirty Lovin' mother, uh, the grandmother of this litter is actually the mother of uh, Kipton Edie's Calico Bear that did so well last uh, winter there. Uh, Forty dash sevens a guild, I think, uh, pretty versatile in their type and kind. You got a market, you got a breeding, you're ready to rock and roll. A guild that's going to last a good while too, because of her composition, her type and kind. She's one that offers a little more moderation and length of side and frame size, but not a little dink by any means, because she's got good stretch and good look up in her front end. I think one that's mobile, square, uh, really heavy, structured for her particular size and square out of her hind end. Uh, one that I think is going to be easy to maintain. Uh, you can stretch her. You can make her go uh, probably, uh, you know, if you needed to, maybe potentially could get into that uh, uh, February, March setting, just depending on what you're wanting to do. But she offers the extras and a really neat kind of a look. She's stout about her head. She's stout coming and going and, and one that I think holds herself together with a great look on the side profile. Lot 20 is going to be 49-17, another guilt sired by doing this. Um, and uh, she is short underline. If anybody knows our notching, uh, she's a dash 17, so she is short on one side. Just want to be transparent. Don't think it necessarily affects anything. Just want people to know what they're buying. Sired by doing this back on a dirty secret Duke. Uh, this mother actually originated from Mox there. We bought a couple years ago. Uh, her mother is actually the mother of McKenna's Roar Guilt. Uh, uh, and my, our, my oldest son, uh, uh, Brantley's Guilt, uh, got a pair of guilts there that dominated and did awfully well. The Roar Guilt uh, dominated the state of Ohio in terms of jackpots. And she was sixth overall at their state fair. Uh, also fifth overall at North American. And then our guilt uh, uh, did, did well on the jackpot circuit, got a piece of a of division there at Expo. And then that, uh, that Roar guilt uh, uh, we actually showed in the fall a little bit. Uh, she was reserved granite stock show. Uh, and uh, just, just a really, really good sow there, uh, sow family uh, that we got. And this guild I think is tremendously good. She's monster legged. She's square. She's got a big arm working in her. She's got shape muscle. Uh, really, really opens up true and, and square coming at you. She's got the extra density, got a huge forearm. Uh, I think one that uh, uh, not only a, a great kind of a guild in terms of a breeding piece, but a show guild that offers all the extras that you're trying to do. Uh, she she is one that is pretty special to us and a great kind of a pedigree we think is very predictable. But a good pair of gilts, a little different in their types, but uh, we think all for quality in this pair of doing this gilts.